20%. No droids, no body hunters, no railos, no right nobodies. With Midnight's Edge uh, winding down for the day, I am on here for a little while. Talk about yesterday's big um, revelation from J.W. Rinsler's. I think it's probably, this is his last, the last book. And I remember him talking about getting this book published when he was on um, uh, some other YouTube channels. I say J.W. Rinsler is probably one of the most admirable people um, to be talking about Star Wars. Uh, hey, Dave. And um, the fact that he wrote this book called A Producer's Journey and it was about Howard Kenzanji and I, I'm gonna say the name that way. I don't. I can't pronounce it. It's uh, Armenian, and he basically wrote this book. Now, you know, I know a lot of y'all would have gone to the live, gone to the bookstore, gone to Barnes and Nobles or whatever, seen the book, and kind of walked past it. But here's the deal: this guy was really important to the last twenty years of. Star Wars history, and, um, oh, and hey to everybody in the chat, and hey, Dominique, and, um, he chronic he chronicalized everything in his, in those big books uh, about the making of, uh, Star Wars, the making of The Empire Strikes Back, the making of Return of the Jedi, and then the making of the Indiana Jones films, okay, so, Rinsler is a very, hey, snorty, um, important dude. Okay, he really is. Um, and the fact that he decided to do this book about Howard K Kinzangian, I guess that's how I pronounce his name, um, uh, is a big deal to me. Um, Star Wars and Lucasfilm was always was was a, not just about George. George actually built Lucasfilm for Marsha. And, um, hey, John, and I got to say, um, we don't know what happened, but whatever happened, happened between her and uh, George, and God bless them both. Uh, I, know, I know for a fact that George is a bit difficult to get along with. He knows what he wants. He doesn't like to be told what to do. She's one of the few people that could get him get him to stop. And um, it's very interesting to me. Excuse me, I gotta do this. Why did I nose do that all the time? Um, it's very interesting to me watching this and, and seeing this play out. Marsha Lucas is one of the reasons why Star Wars was such a huge success. She was the one that helped. She basically was the main editor of the first film. They added the ending scene where the Death Star is about ready to come up and getting to the point where it can actually get into range. Hi, Wolf! Uh, to get the Death Star into range where it could... Um, blow up Yavin 4. And um, she was the one that put the countdown on there. She was the one that put the tension in there. Because she was like, they go and blow up the Death Star and sort of, who cares? Um, and people needed something to cheer for. They needed, and, and she was right. The people, people aren't going to be invested in this if this just goes. I mean, if just, you know, yeah, yeah, she did, and she was right to do it. Now, Marcia's, Marcia, unlike Kathy Kennedy, was actually a, a, a talented woman in her own right. She edited a lot of movies. She edited um, Taxi Driver. Uh, and, you know, this is just you know, one of those things where she's a a respected, she hasn't been in Hollywood in years, by the way. When uh, she and George, she when she left, 
because she left him. Um, uh, he was not exactly nice to her, I guess. He wasn't exactly, you know, he, he pulled some stuff and, you know, they say blackballed her, but I, I don't know. I mean, we, whatever happened between her and George is between her and George and no one else's business. How's that? Anyway, so she didn't have to say anything. She didn't have to come out and defend the the original trilogy, but she did. And you saw what she said. Okay, we, we you know, I did a video. She basically came out and said it enraged her that they killed Han Solo off for no reason. And there was no reason. There was none. They killed Luke off. You know, for no reason. I mean, this she she. Here's the timeline, for people who don't realize, she it was interviewed by Rinsler. Right after, uh, the Last Jedi came out, so, and you can tell by what she's saying. Uh, the Rise of Trash Walker had not uh, even been been filmed yet, so um, it's it's just really fascinating to see that. Now, God knows what she thought about the, the, the Rise of Trash Walker. Because it, of course, is worse. I mean, it just made everything worse. And it gives... Yeah, and Wolf, Wolf, you're right. She went out and defended what they did. She went out and defended her husband's vision. Her ex-husband's vision. And that, to me, is everything. Again, this woman had, has a, a legacy to stand on that Kathy Kennedy doesn't have. And it was very interesting. Um, someone in Doomcock's uh, comments, Hey, John, how are you? Uh, Jonathan Kirby. Um, and one of Doomcock's comments tried to downplay the fact that she brought Frank Marshall up. Oh, you're right. And she's basically saying, all right, this is how women think. Kathy Kennedy didn't get to where she got because she's talented like me. She got to where she got because of her husband. So she brings Frank up. She didn't have to bring Frank up. She didn't even say a word about Frank. She brings Frank up. Okay, because people are there and they're going to go, Okay, they're going to do that. Um, they're going to try to figure out who he is because they don't, her husband, I mean, if they don't know, Kennedy's married, you know. Um, this is a big deal. Okay, this is a big deal. Now, again, this has absolutely nothing to do with Kennedy's contract being renewed or not this year. It has absolutely nothing to do with Bob Chapek, but with J.W. Rinsler gone, Disney can't do anything to him. They can't tell them to take that part out. It's already out there. If they insist on removing it, all hell's gonna break loose. You have one of the most respected women, women in film history calling Kathy Kennedy out. And she did it in a way she might as well have said, bless your heart. Yeah, you're right, Matt Piranha. She also validated George's upset, did she not? Think about it. Okay, she really did. And um, I have to order a copy. I want the book. I, I When Rinsler was on, I think I guess it was not my Star Wars channel um talking to to, to to him uh he mentioned this book now are we going to find out how Kanzangian said anything no are we going to find out maybe uh alan ladd jr who's still alive maybe he'll say something alan ladd jr was the film was the film exec from Fox that basically protected George. 
Okay. Alan Ladd Jr. is also the son of Alan Ladd, the actor. Okay. You want to watch um, a lot of noir movies with, uh, oh God, uh, Veronica Lake. He was, he was that actor. Okay. He was that actor. And it's, it's, oh yeah, I agree. And um, his son ended up working for Fox. His son, there you go, is, is the guy that basically protected George. Got him the, the, uh, the money to make the first movie. And, you know, then George uh, could afford to make his own uh, The Empire Strikes Back on his own. <clears throat> it's a very interesting thing now going on here. Gary Kurtz is gone, so we don't have his opinion. It would have been really nice to hear what he has to say. But the fact of the matter is that Rinsler left that in the book is huge. Oh, that's cool, Wolf. I mean, that is huge that he left that in the book. If you, have to, if you remember Rinsler, he was very worried about... No, I haven't, John. Rinsler didn't want to say anything about Disney. Yep, you're right, Snorty. The, uh, Disney... Um, and the sequel trilogy, he, ha he could not talk about that. But... He left this in the book, and he left this in the book. Yeah, and she's, yeah, I mean, she, it does, and you're right, Matt Pronter, her voice does have weight. So Rensler leaving this in the book is just huge, huge. And, and sadly, with him being gone now, they can't touch him. It's there, there it is. And to be honest, first off, you know damn well, Chapek knew that it was there. Okay, Chapek knows. I think he cares not. I think he cares not. And the reason is this. This plays in to Chapek's hand in dealing with Kennedy. This is also a, you know, again, again, When you think about what she said, when you think about how she said it, women, women don't think that way. All right, she mentioned, yeah, it does. I mean, it, 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 it serves Bob Chapek's goal of freeing Disney and Lucasfilm from Kathy Kennedy, which is, I think, everybody's goal. You know, I mean, hey, Vader fanatic. So... Yeah, this is a big deal. Now, has Marsha ever talked to Kathleen? Oh, I think maybe he did, Dave. I think maybe he did. Um, I think they probably had, I think that she and, and, and Kathleen Kennedy knew, they knew each other, obviously. I think that Kathleen Kennedy and her shared some words. I'm not... To me, when I look at that quote, I see a woman who doesn't really like Kennedy. Um, the bringing up the husband in this scenario is just, you know, when you've got, I mean, let's put it this way. Marsha Lucas is what Kathleen Kennedy thinks she is. Okay. We have an absolute, authentically talented woman who has won Academy Awards. She won she got an Oscar for editing Star Wars. Okay. She really is the real deal. Okay. The Mar Marsha Lucas is the real deal. She's not, um, you know, not this faux feminist running around talking about how put down she's been and all the rest of that shit. This is the real deal. This is a woman who 
basically had her own career and built it herself, okay? Um, and she's defending her work. She's defending what Star Wars is. And she, again, she's right. I mean, she is right. She, she's she's uh, basically taking these people to task because as she said, they don't know. They don't get Star Wars. She called the movies terrible. She said they sucked. And, and seeing that, her say that is a, a revelation, okay? It is a, a moment where you're like, holy shit, okay? That's a big deal, okay, guys? This is a big, big deal. And the reason why it's a big deal is simply this. She didn't have to say a word, didn't have to say anything. But the fact that she said this and Rinsler left it there was a message from the people, from somebody who actually helped make Star Wars, who was there when it was born, who took part in helping give birth to it, okay? That enough is enough. And these are terrible. You people don't know what you're doing. Um, and then, you know, she goes on, on saying, she was furious that they killed off Han Solo with no rhyme or reason. Same thing with Luke. And then Leia, it's like, well, I don't even know who that is. You know, none of us do. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out who the hell that was. This is a big deal. Okay, is it going away? All right, let's talk about the usual suspects. The SJWs, the Brian Youngs. I think it's probably going to be John Favreau. I don't. I, I don't. I don't put much weight into the idea that he wouldn't come in and take it over. Oh yeah, she is now. You know, George. It seemed tried to Ola JS tried to hide her involvement. He was mad at her. And again, I don't, I have theories. I'm not going to get into them. Not my business. I like these guys. I like them both for, for different reasons. Um, and here's the deal. Where was I going? <laughs> I forgot my point. Um, figures. Um, it is not that. She, again, she didn't have to do this. But the fact that she she said they sucked, she said they were terrible, and she went off. Um, and at the end, she said, JJ, Kathy, call me. You know, basically. You know, that's, yeah, I do. I, I like them both. They're, they're, you couldn't have... Nah, I, 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 no, I, I mean, no, Wolf. I mean, when I think of the sequels, it should have been a soft handoff. Everybody's retired or semi-retired. And they, they, it's a soft handoff to the kids. Okay. To Jason. To Jaina, to Anakin. Etc. Okay, I don't see. I don't see killing any of the, the original characters off as being, in such, just in any way, shape, or form, serving the story. Okay, and I think that's what Marsha Lucas meant. You know, I would just say. You know. Well, George. Marsha Lucas is a person who says what she says and means what she means, okay? And obviously, she's had this conversation before, probably with her kids, okay? With her daughters. And, you know, you, you don't have someone who's an obvious boomer saying something sucked like that. 
it, it's not a part of their vernacular, but she did. Because it did. Okay, it sucked. I mean, they're, they're just, they're bad movies. Um, but you got to remember, this interview took place after TLJ came out, before The Rise of Skywalker was even uh, set to start filming. You didn't get to see that. It would be very interesting to, to see where, um, what her view of that movie is. Now, this is where I wanted to go. How do the SJWs and the people who defend this crap at Lucasfilm feel about it? Pablo Hidalgo, has he seen it? Has anybody gone? Uh, you know, gone and, and looked to see if, if he's actually said anything on his public account on Twitter? How does Brian, Brian Young feel about this? Jason Ward, Star Wars Explained, all the rest of these assholes that were, you know, we have to share this fucking era with. It would be very nice because I guarantee you they don't know how to handle this because Marsha is a legitimate badass. She is a legitimate badass woman who's been through a lot in her life She's been very successful on her own. And, you know, she has no, she doesn't, she doesn't give a shit what they think. Okay? They're so beneath her. How are they going to, what are they going to do? Okay? Now, does Disney come out and say anything? No, they're not going to say anything. They don't have to. Again, excuse me, guys, got to do this again. This literally serves Bob Chapek's uh, goal. This, 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 this gives him more ammo. Besides, these are the numbers. They suck. You're fired. Okay. This serves a purpose. Okay. And it is a happy coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences. But this interview took place a long time before we heard the name Bob Chapek. Okay. So, um, you know, this is, hey, Maze. So, well, yeah, it did. Um, but again, this was a long time before any of this stuff started happening. Um, this was basically when the backlash started big time. And there already was was black backlash brewing between discontinuing the EU, crushing all those uh, great um, characters, and then, you know, doing what they did to Han and Luke, you know, in, in TFA. The backlash started, and you could tell by the fact nobody was buying their merchandise. Nobody. Okay. Nobody wants it. You know, if you go to if you go to uh, an Ollie's and you see a rack, like I did, and you guys know I talked to you about it, of rays from the island in TLJ, these were 2017, and they're there for like three bucks a piece. They're the three and a half inch. Um, you know. What? What? Episode one? What? The Phantom Menace? The Phantom Menace was good. What are you talking about, um, Brian? Um, you see the three and a half inch? Uh, that's, t that's telling. That is really telling. Okay. Um, nobody wanted it. Nobody was buying it. Now, there are collectors that go in and go, oh, maybe someday somebody will want these. I'll buy the whole lot and then just keep them. I know guys that do that. I don't want them. But guess what? Disney's not making any money on that anymore. Neither is Hasbro. The moment Ollie's buys out all that stuff, that's it. And that section, to me... Um, looked like it came out of the box from Hasbro. It literally showed up at Ollie's. 
So perhaps, yeah, you did. Um, she basically said that George had lost his way. Um, again, you know, they, I like the prequels, so d you, you better not be down, you better not be attacking them. All right, because I liked them. I, now that I look back on it, you know, I liked them. Well, it, it, it's after TLJ, it was too late. Okay, there was, you could have saved it. You could have done something with The Force Awakens, even though it was a t terrible movie. If you if you're if you're somebody who tells me that you like that movie, I, I'm gonna think you're nuts. Okay, I'm gonna think you're nuts, and the reason is this: y you basically reduce Han Solo to drunk, deadbeat dad Han Solo. Leia turns into this crusty, nasty hag. Luke is nowhere to be seen. There's no reason for it. The, the Force Awakens is a shit bomb movie. The only reason why it made any money is because Harrison Ford. That that trailer, when he shows up on the Falcon and Chewie saying, Chewie, we're home. That brought people to their feet and they went to the movie. And they walked out like this. The fuck I just see? You know, just like me. Okay. When you walk out of a Star Wars movie and there's silence, you know it's not a very good movie. Okay. People should have been cheering. People should have been yipping and yapping and, and, and going nuts. And it, it ended. There was no applause. Just like when I went to TLJ, there was no applause. People got up right when the credits started rolling and left. You know. Um, and And that's... And that's the thing, okay? That's just what happened. You know, and people were mad. Yeah, I, you know, it, it just, it, look, again, J.J. Abrams is not a good writer. He didn't understand the stories. He didn't understand the movies. He didn't give a shit about the characters. He can run around saying he's the biggest Han Solo fan, fan on the planet. Here's the problem. Those, the, uh, TFA proves he's not. Okay? Proves he's not. Now, did he do what Kathy Kennedy wanted him to? Did he? Probably. Was she right? No. Did anybody tell her, say, we can't do this, the fans are going to get mad? No. Okay, and that's the thing, all right? And then you've got Ryan, I hate Star Wars Johnson, writing the script before TFA even started rolling. He had no idea what the movie was gonna be about. No idea, there was no plan. They've admitted there was no plan. And here we are, okay? Now, why? Did this, why is Marsha, Marsha's statement so big? Because it's going to give people in Hollywood who respect her, who know who she is, the, the knowledge that Kennedy doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Hey, Senator Dave, that Kennedy doesn't know what the hell she's doing. Okay, and she doesn't. Right in a little bit. Um. <clears throat> You know, I I am in awe of of her for for coming out and saying what she said. I think we all should be. This is this is playing into our hands, and it's playing into George Lucas's hands, and Bob Chapek's hands. Because guess what? Marsha Lucas said everything about what they were doing to Star Wars that we have been saying for four fucking years or longer. Okay. She said they didn't, 
I don't, a Funko Pop? I don't want to, I hate Funko Pops. No, no, I'm, I don't, I'm not doing, I, I'm not doing merch. This isn't, you know, they probably shut down my channel if I did that. So, you know, I don't make any money on that, on this stuff, and I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. Anyway, I'm very, um, it's, it's, it's just, this is stuff that needed to be said. And now it's out there in a book for everybody to read. They can't stop her from saying it because she's not under an NDA. And J.W. Rensselaer is dead. He passed away like last month. So there you go. Okay. This is, this is big. This is, this is big. And you can bet your sweet Bibby, Kathy Kennedy, has already read her comments. All right. And I know what Marsha was saying. Basically, she was implying without saying it very indirectly that Kathy Kennedy, oh yeah, I knew her when she got, I knew her when she was getting coffee for the boys. That's it. That's it. That's Kathy Kennedy. And then she talks about her husband. And connect that to that woman got her jobs because of him. Kathy Kennedy. Marsha Lucas was talented and did all, all, a lot of her work on her own. So she built her career on her own. Okay. This is, this is basically the real deal telling the fake to fuck off. Okay, that's what this is. Okay, that's, that's exactly what this is. But anyway, my phone is dying, so I'm going to have to go now, okay? So I'm going to rock. I got to put the dog. He just got to, he just got to, here, you guys want to see him? He's laying right here. He's a very good boy. There he is. Actually, before I go, yeah, I am. I'm a lot more optimistic than I was. Um, you know, 2018, when we got the big letdown that she was, she was coming back, you know, it was like, fuck, you know, but anyway, you know, I, I feel better. I, this is different now. This is, this is different now. So I'm going to rock. You guys be good. Remember to hit the likes. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and, uh, Share it around. It helps. It helps with the algorithm. So I know. I know. Mazer has said it was. It was last night's discussion. I think he just cut that off and edited it out. Anyway, I'll see you guys around the galaxy.